Hi there, um, it's Jan here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel after a very, very long break. Um, and today I'm going to try and make some of these little dresses for you and give you all the sizes and measurements. They proved to be quite popular actually on the little um, junk journaling groups that I belong to. Uh, much more popular than I thought they would be anyway. So um, lots of people who you know have asked me how to do them so I'm going to attempt to show you how to do it and the only thing is this might be a long video because I can't do editing I don't know how to do it I'm not very good at that um, but we'll just have to muddle through and see how we get on the other thing is I've got my dogs in my in the um, craft room here with me so if you hear any frantic barking um, it's probably because a leaf blew down the road or something like that or a person thought about walking past our house they are a bit reactive, um, but hopefully they'll be quiet and behave themselves. Anyway, right, today, so um, there's been a lot of sort of um, um, questions and all that about the bodice. Now, the bodice part of the dress is not my design. I didn't invent it. I found it on YouTube, um, but I had that adapted it and altered it. So uh, the person I think um, who I copied their instructions was G I K K E R R, and that's from Happiness in Crafting, and I think it's called Origami Bodice or something like something basic like that. Um, her one that she did is a true origami one in that it's got no cutting, no sticking, no anything. Um, whereas mine, I've cheated a bit um, because it was all a bit too complicated for me. Um, and I've made mine, I've scaled it right down, made it much smaller so that I can make a smaller dress and it will fit on the page of a junk journal or whatever. Or you can do what I've done and that is add a paper clip and turn it into a little, you know, nice little paper clip for a pocket or something, um, which I'll show you how to do. But the first thing I'm going to start with is the skirt because if I run out of time, um, I can always give you a link for the uh, bodice and you can probably sort of muddle your way through it but if I do get time I'll show you how I do mine because I do mine slightly different to the way that she does hers and I've got different um, sizes and measurements but let's start with the skirt okay so let's push this out of the way for the moment um, I don't know if you can still sort of see it yeah on the camera that's good right first thing I do is I make up these templates and at the moment I make I batch make these dresses so I make them about six five six at a time um i've got a a few others that i just made the other day um so let's just show you these these are because i'm doing an autumn journal at the moment so they're in autumn colors so there's this one which is really pretty i like that one that one which is lovely um and this one little gold beads have gone a bit hay haywire but it's really pretty and again these are all sort of autumn colors now just looking at these you can see how different they all turn out to be and yet it's the same pattern so yours that you make will be completely unique and i'll kind of go back to some of these and show you what i did or what mistakes i made or whatever um so this is this one here for example is the same size skirt but with a bigger bodice um to try and so as i was um, sort of trying to make it see see what's the optimum size for the bodice and the optimum size and how it fits the skirt etc so um, I actually think that I like this size bodice with this size skirt so that's what we're going to do today let's put these out of the way for a minute we'll come back to them in a little while I think probably so what I've done I've made about six of these little bodices so they're all made up ready, but I will tell you how to make them. But as I say, first of all, I'm going to show you how to make the skirt. Because to me, that's sort of more important. Because you can actually get some instructions on how to make these bodices um, already on YouTube. But anyway, we'll go back to that. So the first thing I need to do, or first thing we need to do, is make a template. Because you need the bases in order to stick all the layers of lace and trims and everything else to okay so this is how i make them they are so if you first of all cut a piece of it's quite it's not um very thick card but it is i mean it would go through the printer um 
that's sort of ideal but it's thicker than copier paper and it's thicker even than like really good quality copier paper um, it's probably um, scrapbook thickness paper so if you've got any um, scrapbook paper that you don't like or whatever um, just use it to make the base because it's all going to be completely covered anyway you're not going to see it let me just check that I'm still in frame here because I do have a tendency to wander about the place right so the first thing you want is a piece of card or a piece of this sort of don't know whether you call it card or paper um, that measures across the bottom it is well mine's three and seven eighths but it started off at four so let's say four to start with and the height of it is uh, sorry about the traffic i've got to have my window open a bit because it's really hot today is three and three quarters inches this is i don't do centimeters i'm afraid um so yeah four across the bottom three and three quarters high and obviously that will give you a square piece of uh, or a rectangular piece of cardstock like that so you need first of all you need to draw a line straight down the middle of the card okay it won't be shaped yet until we've done all the measurements right so once you've got a piece of card that's rectangular like that and you've got a line down the middle the first thing i guess you need to do is either side of that central line you need to make two marks which are hold on a second half an inch apart so the whole top piece there is one inch half an inch this side of this line and half an inch the other side of this line okay so that will be central then it's up to you you can either draw straight lines from here to the four inch uh, four inches at the bottom or you can try and do as i've done and that is just basically gently curve it so um you get this sort of shape and the the best way to do that on a piece of paper like this is what I've done is fold this piece of paper in half like that so that you've got half an inch at the top and two inches at the bottom then you draw the curve and cut it out and then both sides are going to be looking exactly the same all right rather than trying to sort of hand draw two complete things I think the other thing you could try and use is maybe like a dinner plate size so you could put a dinner plate here and draw around the outside of it because the actual curve is really quite big. It, it would certainly be dinner plate size. But anyway, so you want to try and end up with this shape. And this is um, the basic for all the skirts that we're going to make, or for the skirt that we're going to make today. Now, um, on mine, I've marked in various uh, measurements where I put, you know, I put a layer of lace here, I put a layer of um, bits and pieces here which I'll show you but the first measurement and really the most important measurement you need is this one here so on either side in the middle as well if you want to but particularly either side you need to put a little mark that is one and three quarter inches up from the bottom so from the bottom to there is one and three quarter inches don't worry about trying to go around the curve just in a straight line one and three quarter inches OK, because that's where the first layer of your pleats are going to start. Right. OK, so um, the next thing is, is that about hold on, not about. Let me just actually measure it. Move these things out of the way. If you like measurements, I mean, I tend to just do it by eye, but if you like measurements, so three quarters of an inch down that central line from the top, from the top to down the central line three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch put a little dot um i've actually done it with a the tip of a um my pokey tool to make a little miniature little tiny hole there but that shows you where the actual bodice is going to come to and that's quite important when you come to fitting all the other stuff all right so three quarters of an inch down from the top to there put either a little dot in pencil or as i've done i put a little miniature tiny little hole there um, mainly because i can do these in a stack then and just pierce through the whole lot of them right so by now you should have this shape and now we can start to construct it 
So the first things, let me move this out of the way so it doesn't confuse you. The first things we need, we're going to need a layer of some kind of lace. And I've been lucky enough to have some pre sort of pleated stuff already. But if you haven't, then that's fine. Just use ordinary lace. We're going to need the first layer of pleats, paper pleats. We're going to need another layer of lace. Then we're going to need a layer of these things, which I've called cones. Well, they are cones, basically. And to be honest with you, this is the hardest part of the entire project is making these. Um, I just want to say right up front that this is not a project for absolute beginners. You need to have some crafting experience to be able to do this. And it's, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. It can be, you, you know, you've got to be quite concentrated um, and that. So, yeah, we need to make some of these little cones, which I'll tell you about um, in a little while. And again, I mean, I've got a lot here for my six dresses i've got loads more of these but this is a sitting in front of the tv project where you can just you know be mindlessly winding up these cones because you know otherwise it drives you do lally but basically you need five is it five or six six you need six of these little cones that's the next layer then the layer after that is the ribbons and then there's a layer of lace again. Um, I just happen to have folded mine over. So mine's double, but you know, it could be single, it's fine. Then there's another layer of pleats, another layer of lace, and on top of that lot goes the bodice, holding it all down. And if you want to, attach a paper clip to make this into a, you know, something that will go on a little pocket or something. You don't have to. You can just have it so you stick it on the on the page as is um, the other thing is is that depending on what state the back is because there's obviously going to be lots and lots of different layers if this looks like a right mess i will cut out of paper another version another skirt and stick it over the top to make the back look nice and tidy but this one's worked out where it doesn't look too untidy um, there's only this bit here and I, it would get in the way of the paper clip if i put um you know like a, a another paper backing on there no one's going to see it anyway in the journal so i've left mine like that but you can do sort of as you want right so there's going to be a layer of these pleats there's going to be a layer of these cones there's going to be in total one two three four layers of lace two layers of pleats one layer of cones ribbons um, and various beading and other sort of embellishments that you want to use. Um, okay, so let's get on to the cones first because that will be the easiest thing for me to describe. These are circles cut out of one and a half inch diameter. I've used a die. I used this one because I actually wanted the little fluted edge. Um, which you can probably just see around the round there like that but you don't have to you can just cut you can, if you've got a one and a half inch punch then just punch them out you're going to need six of these per skirt um, in whatever colors you want to make um, and what you do um, I have not got a circle hmm, why didn't I do a circle anyway I'll show you as best I can. I use a pencil to produce this cone shape. So, and the pencil's got quite a long leg, but it, it gives me that sharp angled sort of cone shape. And believe me, I've tried finding anything else that will do it and I can't find anything. But basically you put the circle in the middle like that with your pencil and then you wrap one side round carefully then you wrap the other side round and stick it and you end up with this. So it sort of overlaps on one side. Um, what a shame, I do not have a circle. That's a bit of an omission of mine, isn't it? Otherwise I would have shown you exactly how to do that. But anyway, if there's any questions, um, kind of put them in the comments and I'll show you later and I'll, I'll kind of address it later. But anyway, basically you end up with this cone shape that is overlapped here and it's got like a little like a little hole bit at the top. So it's like that. That's the thing. That's what you're aiming for. There's something that looks like that. And um, it can be 
quite a boring job that's why i'm saying to you do it when you're sort of sitting in front of the telly or something like that because you can just wrap that round wrap that round and stick it and you know you hardly know you're doing anything right okay so you need six of these one two three four five six um yeah um, sorry, the other thing I forgot to mention is, is that this really only works with photocopier paper. Um, it's got to be as thin as possible because all these pleats, they won't, you won't be able to do them um, and you won't be able to do the cones if you're using like normal scrapbook paper, which is really quite thick. So anything more than um, like really basic copier paper, um, You'd, you'd really struggle to do it, to be honest with you. At this size, you'd really struggle to be able to get the um, folds and the, all the rest of it. So if you've got any, um, you know, downloadable kits or whatever, then download them straight onto ordinary photocopy paper. I haven't done it double-sided because it's not needed. You do see a little bit of the white in these cones here, inside here, but to be fair, I don't think you notice it particularly and it, it you know, it looks all right to me, it doesn't, you know. But if you want to do it double-sided, then do so. Right, okay, how do we make the pleats? Right, well, don't laugh, but this is actually my pleated piece. And this is another thing you do, I do in front of the TV because it's another mindless job. Um, and basically you need um, a sheet of um, standard size copy paper that you've you've um, printed on and I cut it up into strips that are an inch and a half inch and a half let's just check yeah inch and a half wide and then to get to get to this, although you won't probably need that because I'm doing six at a time, you'll probably only be doing one or whatever to start with. Basically, get all your folding done first of all, because if you get all your products and everything ready together, it'll make this job a whole lot easier. It will just flow. If you don't, it's, a, it's quite difficult. But anyway, basically, I think you could probably make one of these dresses with two strips of this copy paper that are one and a half inches wide by what is it eight and a half something like that length uh see i'll get my other ruler hold on eight, uh, so it's one and a half inches wide by oh no i cut them down the length of it so it's 11 and a quarter but to be fair you can make it any size you want because all you do is you just join the strips you know if you if you don't have enough you just just draw, join two strips together and all i do is run a little bead of glue um this is my cosmic shimmer glue and it's just running out so got to be careful with it and i haven't got any to i haven't ordered any to replace it which is stupid of me so i maybe give it about eighth of an inch down there i try and make sure that the bottom edge is as straight as possible so i probably do this say up against a ruler like that so you get your bottom edge really straight before you stick them together which that one isn't so it needs to go over a little bit more like that but the, the idea is to get it as straight as you possibly can when you've got it like that it's easier to pleat the whole thing than it is to do loads and loads of little bits um that's what i find anyway now, there's loads of ways you can do it. You can be really, really precise about it and measure it and fold up all the pleats um, if you want to. And I have done that just to show you what happens, what the difference is. So let me just show you this one. Let's move that out of the way for a minute. hope this is not all too confusing. But this one here is all measured and pleated. And what you, what you get is a flat, a very flat piece which is you know it's nice it's not bad but in order to get a curve which i prefer like this one um and this one obviously i just random pleat it 
okay so that if you measure it and fold it it gives you that kind of pleating which is fine if you just random pleat it you get that which i don't know i think is better but it's entirely up to you what you do right okay so i'll show you a little bit of how to do this but i won't take up too much of your time because as i say i can't do editing so i'm no good at that and basically while you're sitting in front of the telly probably you just take a piece of paper take your strip of paper and starting about um, half an inch maybe from the end you just basically fold it into a little pleat at the top don't worry too much about this don't matter doesn't don't worry about how straight it is or anything like that and i don't really fold it down i just you know just get it out of the way then you leave a gap of about eighth of an inch and you make another little pleat of about an eighth of an inch something like that so basically the pleats almost almost come together i don't know if you can see that like that but not quite so then i'm going to leave another i don't know quarter of an inch or so maybe a bit more um, and just try and manipulate it into another little pleat like that okay so you end up with this and i'm going to do that all the way down the strip some pleats are going to be bigger some pleats are smaller some pleats are further away from each other to get a nice finish like this you want to you know you don't want to scrimp on the pleating if you know what i mean you want to you know don't sort of do a pleat here and a pleat over here and a pleat over here you actually want them sort of like this but you haven't got to be precious about it at all you just you know manipulate the paper like that do it the best you can say leave quarter of an inch maybe even half an inch and try and do an eighth of an inch pleat okay like that if you want to measure it the the um sizes are the actual sizes are um from the end or for in between the pleats is uh five eighths of an uh, five eighths of an inch and the pleat is a quarter of an inch so you do five eighths of an inch score a line quarter of an inch score a line bring those two together then you leave five eighths of an inch score a line do you see what i mean but like i say i think random pleating just gives you a more natural look and a you know a, a just a better finish really besides which you end up with the, the actual curve that you want to end up with you don't end up with a straight line you end up with the curve that you want to end up with to make this kind of go round here okay so when you've pleated all your bit of paper or as far as you want to go with it you just get a little bit of glue let's use this because this is my art glitter glue which i haven't used but i want to use it up actually and then you just put a little tiny spot of glue on the small bit on the small bit there and there and you kind of refold it and hold them all together for a few moments until it's stuck so you only stick it at the top edge like that okay and then you carry on and you do a few more stick it down so it doesn't get too far away from you then do a few more stick them down and what you end up with uh, see that's stuck there like that and it, you can see it's beginning to curve which is what we want um, because um, I mean you might like the straight edge which I showed you a little moment ago you might like this finish that is straight across here um, I prefer the curved edge so when we come to put this on here this is why we've got these marks here we're gonna put this on here and it will naturally form its own curve as you've pleated it so you get the shape and then all you need to do is trim off these edge pieces once you've stuck it down but i'm getting a bit ahead of myself so when you've pleated this whole length of this whole strip these two pieces that you've stuck together that will be enough to do this layer and this layer and probably have a little bit over but you know that doesn't matter so what you end up with then 
what I'll try and show you, demonstrate, is this, a piece like this. Not as big as this, obviously, but you'll end up with a piece like this. Okay? And it does naturally curve round. So what you need to do is attach this to the base of the skirt, or you're going to in a minute anyway. There's a step to do before that. So you put that on that mark, and that on that mark, like that. Just let it form its own curve. Now, what you'll see is, is that there's little bits showing here of this card. So you just need to trim that off. Once you've stuck this down, you just need to trim that off so that it looks like a complete curve, okay? And if this won't behave itself, which it won't sometimes, um, I just cut little snips into the top of it where I've stuck it and pleated it. I'll just cut little slips about a quarter of an inch deep every eighth of an inch, and that way you can manipulate it a lot better. So if you haven't got many pleats in it or it doesn't look right to you, you can manipulate it a lot by just, you know, putting some snips in it like that. Okay. So the piece that you need, you need it to, it, the top of it's got to reach that bit there, but it's also got to stick out the side a bit. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. It will stick out the side a bit because of the curve and the same on this side here so for example you need it to here but you want the bottom of it cut to here okay and the piece you need to go across this part here is about four inches long i believe let me just double check yeah so it's just slightly bigger than if you measured it straight the way across it's three and a half if you measure it but you actually need it about four inches because it's going to come down here like that as opposed to like that all right so four inch piece of ready pleated paper will fit this okay so i'm going to cut mine off at four inches and i'll show you so i'm going to straighten it up the best i can and the four inch mark is about here. It's about here. So I'm just going to prise this one apart a little bit and cut it off. Excuse me. I hope all of this is making sense to you. I'm just not very good at making these videos, um, but I sort of say that at the time, but people still wanted to see them. So the piece you want for there is four inches and the piece you want for here, ready pleated, is two inches so with my four inch piece i am going to in a minute i'm going to stick this down but there's a little job i've got to do first okay so the first job i need to do is to select a piece of lace and in my case these happen to be like pre-pleated and really big um and to be honest with you i could cut it down but you know i can't be asked so um there's no need to if you don't want to but what you want is something that's going to come a quarter of an inch about a quarter of an inch maybe just a little bit more below the level of the skirt so it's going to come to about there something like that and that's the bit that pokes out at the bottom all right so when you've got the piece that you want Okay, you can either cut it to size if you want to, if that's up to you, or if you've got a small piece of lace that you want to use, that's fine as well. Um, if you're going to use a flat lace, say like this, that we're going to use later on, I would take a piece that is one and a half times the width. So it's four plus half is two, that's six inches in total, a piece of flat lace, and just gather it with stitches until it fits this. Okay, hope that makes sense. But anyway, oh gosh, it's really warm. So on the back of this skirt, I'm going to turn it over because it's, you know, kind of not important where the measurements are on this. I'm actually going to stick this piece of lace down, making sure it comes to the sides and that it's about quarter of an inch longer 
than the base of the skirt. So I'm going to use for that, I'm going to use my um, three in one glue, which if you're anything like me, you find is an absolute nightmare. It's like a volcano. As soon as you take the lid off of it, it just spurts everywhere and keeps on going. Um, the only thing I found that works to stop it being a volcano sometimes is to have only half a bottle of it. So there's a big air gap above it and to thin it right down with um, acetone, you know, nail varnish remover to about three quarters of a bottle and always keep that big gap there. Otherwise it just leaks everywhere, which, you know, it still does, but just not as bad as it does if you, if you um, use it neat out of the bottle. Um, I mean, it's good glue, it's fabulous glue. It's just an absolute pain to work with. And the amount of YouTubers I see that say exactly the same thing, um, you think the manufacturer would do something about it, but apparently not. But anyway, that's the way I deal with it, is don't have a full bottle and water it down. Right, so somewhere along here, uh, probably where my little marks were, which I can see from the other side, I'm going to run some glue, some of this glue across. That can be straight, that's absolutely fine, it's not a problem. I'm going to make sure I run it down the sides like this and I'm going to put a fairly good amount in the middle as well and try and run it fairly close to the bottom, not right up close but fairly close. So tip it up, pop your lid back on and hopefully it won't gloop everywhere. Um, and to that I'm going to attach my piece of um, lace or pleated material or whatever you want to use okay so i'm just turning it over i'm going to make sure that it's as level as i can get it which is about there because it is pleated material it doesn't want to play play nicely and just basically press it down like that and then when it's dry in a moment or two i'm going to cut the excess off okay so that's that. I'll cut the excess off when it's dry. In the meantime, you have your four inch piece like this. And we're going to, don't worry about it coming over the edges or anything, that's absolutely fine. We are going to match up one side, match up the other side, make sure that the bottom of this covers the bottom of this piece of cardboard, this piece of card. So you don't want it up here. You want it to cover that. And actually it can even cover some of the lace at the, at the underneath lace, that's absolutely fine. And we're gonna stick that down, okay? So this time I'm gonna use my Better Behaved Art Glitter Glue. As I say, I usually use um, Cosmic Shimmer, but um, I haven't got any ordered, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna put some glue roughly where I think the, the semicircle is going to be. It doesn't matter. It's really not a fine art. It's just, you know, you just um, do what you think. And the other thing is, don't forget, this is on the front. That piece of lace there was stuck to the back. This is the front. Okay, I'm just going to put a few little bits on here because we actually want this edge to be free moving. And... The thing about um, art glitter glue is you get one chance, basically. So I don't need to snip my edges. It's already gone into a curve, but if it doesn't, I would snip those edges. In fact, I will do definitely for the piece further up. And I'm going to stick one side of it to where that mark is there and the other side of it to where that mark is there. Don't forget that the skirt will then sort of splay out a bit see I could have done with snipping it there I'm going to have to just press it down and do it by brute force um, the skirt is going to splay out a bit but that's what we want all right we want it to look nice like that now in the meantime that's dried so I'm just going to cut off the excess of this which is kind of up here and this doesn't matter what it looks like 
can be as brutal as you like with it. Okay, we'll get rid of that. We are also going to, now do you see these pieces here of the card stock of the skirt that stick out? We're also going to get rid of those level with the bottom of this. So just pop your scissors in, fold the lace back a bit, pop your scissors in and trim that off so that it's not sticking out, it's level, okay? And same with this piece here. These scissors are not all that strong. Uh, strong. Right, okay, so that's that. Let's get rid of all these bits of rubbish out of the way. So now we have this. As you can see, I've made a bit of a mistake there, but all I'm going to do actually is add a little bit more glue and stick that over there when, it's, when I need to. Um, so now I need to um, add another layer of lace, which is this one. And I'm going to use, I've got all my pieces pre-cut out actually. I'm going to use this lace um, because I'm going to cover quite a bit of the skirt, but you can use a small lace, you can use whatever you want. It's basically just to cover this raw edge and hang down quite prettily there. And this is six inches, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the centre, which is there. I'm going to put a little bit of glue Right, now, first thing I need to do is to, I hope you're still able to see this and that I'm actually in shot. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, hope so. Right, I want to measure how far down I want this lace to come. And I, might, I want mine to cover quite a bit of those um, pleats. So I'm going to put um, a mark here. Where's my pencil? Um, lost my pencil as opposed to my marbles all right let's get another pencil out so i want this to come down about that far over my pleats so i think that looks quite pretty so i'm going to put a mark here okay right that distance there is a, just less than half an inch maybe on mine might be different on yours and I'm actually going to take it the same all the way across so you can do this if by measuring it if you want to or you can just do it by you know just looking at it as I'm trying to do here it, like I say it's not an exact science this is just a rough guideline for you so you just go around here like this okay and that's your sticking line for your lace now this is like a little bit different for this lace you're going to put a line of glue here down the center line and a line down the side here and a line down the side here but nothing in the middle remember to put my pin in this time i hope the traffic isn't bothering you too much right okay now you put you fold it in half to find the center Get your centre and stick it there. And hold it down for a moment or two until it actually sticks properly. I'm going to use my little silicon spatula thing, so I don't want to get it all over my hands and nails. Let's move some of this junk out of shot. Get rid of some of this rubbish. And also, you're going to bend this and stick this side down to here you've got this big loop in the middle yep that's fine that's how it's supposed to be you just hold it down till it sticks like that like that and you're going to do the same thing on this side i mean take it easy if you want to do it slower so you just do the middle and you just do the sides one at a time that's absolutely fine but the end result needs to be that it's stuck in those um, places. So you've got one edge stuck there, one edge stuck there, which it isn't doing at the moment, it's not playing nicely, and the middle bit stuck down there, which that's not doing either, but it has to, it will do. 
put a bit more glue under that i think um maybe i'll use this so this is three in one go or fabric track whichever rocks your bow i think three in one's cheaper but it's the same stuff anyway right this one doesn't want to play oh it does now <laughs> contrary right okay so it has stuck right now you've got these two loops here yeah so what you're going to do now is put a little blob of glue in the middle on that line but in the middle it wants to come out and you're going to hold you're going to find the center of this and stick that down and that should give you a loop either side anybody who's done dressmaking who knows how to sew this is how you put sleeves in so it's exactly the same I mean you can you can definitely and there's no reason at all why you shouldn't simply run a gathering thread all through your lace and then just gather it up to it till it's the right size but this is the lazy person's technique um right okay now i'm going to put another little blob of glue in the middle and this time as i say i've got i'm having more luck with this three in one glue than i did with the, with the um this stuff the art glitter glue i'm going to find the middle of this and i'm going to come out of the way and i'm going to stick it down and hold it there till it sets and already you can start to see the pleats forming yeah and at least you know they're even they're evenly spaced um yeah okay right let's hope that's done and then basically you just do the same thing for the next you know these pleats and you just stick them down as well in the middle so let's put some glue on here little blob of glue come on one minute it won't stop coming out the next minute it won't come out at all that contrary right stick that bit down in the middle Yes, okay, you are going to have these little bumpy bits that just hold them down. You know, and this is like the the lazy person's technique for fitting in a pleated sleeve or something into a garment if you're making it. Not that I'm an expert, but I've made a few for the kids over the years. Um, <laughs> much to their disappointment. <laughs> Oh dear, I thought they looked lovely because they all matched. <laughs> Apparently, now they tell me they didn't like it, but hey ho, there you go. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to work my way along that line, ever decreasing the amount of bulk that I've got in this lace. It's a bit time consuming job, but not as time consuming as making those cones. Fortunately, you only need. Did I say five? One, two, three, four, five. No, six. Fortunately, you don't need a hundred other things. Unless, of course, you happen to be making lots of dresses at the same time, like I am. And I think I've got... Six. I think I've got 48 of the things. So I'm sure you can appreciate that. I've pretty much had enough of it by the end. <laughs> Um, right, okay, another blob of glue here. Um, as I say, sorry about the traffic noise. We do live on a road and also the light is maybe not so good now. We've had a beautiful sunny day here today actually, but it is late September. Um, so I think we just have to be really thankful for whatever we get at the moment. We've had a few bad days, but... Um, uh, yeah it's been lovely at the moment but it is it is late september so it won't be long till it's back to rubbish weather again and only somebody was saying on the radio today 96 days till christmas that's a joy isn't it <laughs> right let's stick that bit down okay when it's there it's there you know what i mean it's just that it takes a while to hold it all down 
that's why these videos are long because if i was good at editing i'd be able to just whiz through this and speed it all up but i'm absolutely computer phobic and absolute rubbish at this and um, that's one reason why i gave up working when i did i had an opportunity to retire and i took it because the job i was doing was becoming increasingly computerized and i didn't grow up with computers um and so i have absolutely no knowledge of them my grandchildren know far more than i do anything like that the tech world um right so now we've got something that looks a bit like that okay so now taking these cones you want to make sure that the you see where it dips up in the middle hold on let's put that down you see where it dips up in the middle try and get that in the center of the front and just press the top of the cone a bit flat like that okay i'm sorry if you can hear my tummy rumbling i don't know why it's doing that um right so and we're going to do that five we're going to do that six times one two three four five one two three four five six why well, have i only got five out oh one's gone inside the other that's why there is six there right so i don't press the cone completely flat i like that little tube but i do press the top flat so that i can actually attach it and just using a little bit of your ordinary art glitter glue or whatever glue you, is your choice i don't I really don't think glue stick would hold this because it is quite, um, you know, it's quite sort of heavy. Right, and now I'm where I'm going to place this, this is why I haven't drawn another line. I want it to cover the lace. I want it to cover just the top edge of those pleats so that you can't see it. So can you see the pleats through the lace? It's there, 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 all the way round, yeah? I want the bottom of this to just cover the top of that. So I'm going to place this along the side, following the shape of the skirt, like that. Right? Then you can see, I hope you can see, you better see in a minute, that that covers... The base of that just covers that line of the pleats and that's the line we're going to go to. Okay, so take your next cone, find the centre like that, press it down at the top, apply a little bit of glue, just a little dob, it doesn't have to be too much, but it does need to hold securely. And then we're going to apply that following the line of the skirt on this side. So it just covers the line of the pleats, wherever that comes to, and follows the line of the skirt. So this part here, hold on, wait till it's stuck. If I turn it over, you'll see that it comes outside the shape of the skirt, but that's fine. That's what we want it to do. So it's beginning to look a bit of a mess here, isn't it? Again, that's fine. No one's going to see it. And then you just evenly place these. So basically, once you've got them placed down, they should fit pretty much next to each other at the bottom. Whoops. Gosh, it's ridiculous. So this one here, I'm going to place it so that it's next to this one. There's a gap between it at the top. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a problem. That's what the ribbon's there for. And don't forget, this is my just my way of doing this because I've not I've not seen any tutorials on how to do this. Don't think anybody else does it. Um, but this is just how I've fiddled around with things and found how to do it for, that suits me. So again, this one here, I'm going to butt it up to the edge. I'm going to cover the top edge of that, leave a gap and just stick it down. Okay, so it looks like that. There. Then I am going to do the next one. Find the centre, 
press the top down flat but not the base so I can still get my finger up it if that's what rocks your boat <laughs> and put some glue on the top I hope you're still able to see this guys oh gosh can you hear my tummy rumbling then we're going to place that next to it so it just comes to the side of that central line and hold that down and we're going to do the same with the last one so find that in the center press the top pop some glue on it like that and then we're going to put that in the gap which should be there just manipulate it the best way you can so that it all forms every now and again stop and hold it up and look at it and it see you know it forms a, a good curve it doesn't matter about these gaps because that like i say that's what the ribbon's for okay the ribbon strips now when it comes to the ribbon strips you could use lace you could use ribbon you could use whatever you want really i'm choosing to use ribbon oh itchy arm and you need one two three four five pieces of ribbon which are each uh, three inches long okay and on mine i'm just going to simply fold the ends together like that and snip this out to make a little fish towel stop it fraying all over the place so that's one fold it together snip a little fish towel out of it two three three come on be nice play nicely oh gosh sorry about my tummy right three i want two more pieces of ribbon four four goodness me that's embarrassing and five there we go i've got all mine cut to size you know ready to go because i'm batch making right like that and just a little extra thing that i do at the top is just seal the ends with a one of these little mini flamethrower things so i just don't want it all falling apart doesn't matter if it gets burnt that makes no difference at all because you're not going to see it but it just stops it fraying right now then we need to attach these in the gaps so we are going to um, see if all of our pieces of ribbon are the same length sometimes you just miscut one or whatever and you end up with one a bit longer or a bit shorter but in any case if you have miscut them you want the longest piece which in my case is this one just by about a quarter of an inch and i'm going to attach this down the center See this, where there's a potential gap there, I'm going to attach it down the centre there, okay? And I want it to sit just above the hemline of the skirt. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to it. Again, I'm going to use this fabric tack. Oh, sorry, um, three in one. A little blob of that at the top. Come on. Stop being so contrary. There, I'm going to add it to the card, the you know, the card base, just so that it overlaps those and fills that gap in you so you can't see it. Not that you could see it anyway, because we're going to cover it in pleats in a minute. But um, yeah, you know what I mean. And then I'm going to attach two at the sides and i'm going to make these a little bit shorter so that it kind of comes down in a curve just because i think that looks quite pretty you can do them however you want make them all the same length make them different lengths make them exactly however you want so this one here is going to go a little bit higher up 
and in the middle of those two like that just whatever you do on one side make sure you do it the same on the other side so i'm going to take another piece little blob of glue and i'll have to get up and put the light on in a minute because it's getting a bit dark um you know i hope it's holding me up right i'm going to try and get this the same sort of length as that which is about about there and stick that down and then my next two pieces i'm just going to put in the middle so they're slightly longer than that not as long as that Hope you're not getting bored with this video already so do prattle on a bit but yeah i used to make videos a while ago when i used to make cards and i think somebody did feedback to me once that um you know i need to do some editing and all that and then it wasn't very nice the way they put it and that and it just like i was thinking well i'm not an expert i'm just you know basically a lay person who's trying to do their best and show people how to do things and it sort of really knocked my confidence a bit, really. But anyway, we're giving it another go. So hopefully it'll be better this time. <laughs> Still not any shorter, but better. Right, okay. So there's this last one, which again, we're going to try and match up. So that it is the same as the other side. I'm going to hold that down. Right now comes a tricky bit for me because stupidly I've doubled my lace up, but presumably you'll only have a single layer. Um, hmm. Having said that though, I could actually cut my lace and just have it as a single layer. Hold on. Um, that's a long piece. Oh yeah, they are long pieces. Right, okay, so these... This piece of lace is six, uh, five inches, okay? And I'm actually gonna cut up the middle of mine. I might lay two layers of it, but I'm just gonna make life easy for myself. Single layer is much easier than a double layer. And we're gonna do exactly the same as what we did with this one. So we're gonna put some, gonna see where this comes to. We want it to, you know, sort of come down onto the top. We want it really about where the top of these cones are, yeah? So that it covers the cones as it hangs down, but, you know, not too much, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Maybe you don't know what I mean. Um, anyway, right, so I'm going to find the centre of it again. I'm going to put down a blob of the glue, which is just here. I mean, at the moment, to be fair, this looks like a right mess. It just doesn't look like a mess, you know, when you've done it. It looks nice when you've done it. And I'm going to put this down. Stick the centre down. So that, for me, it comes just to the top of the top of where the cones are. But it depends on how wide your lace is. I mean, you might be using a piece of lace that's two inches wide, so you'll want to stick it up here somewhere, you know. But mine's about three quarters of an inch, maybe. It is now, anyway. Hold on, let's get rid of some of this rubbish here. Fortunately, it just, as soon as you pull it off, it goes dry. So it's, it doesn't leave a big mess everywhere. That's its one saving grace, really. Okay. And I'm going to do the same over here. Get the air back in it so it doesn't volcano everywhere. And I'm going to take, whoops, sorry about this. It's a bit clumsy, but there you go. Let's move all this toot. Right, I'm going to take this end and stick it to this side. The overlap a bit. Hang out a bit. Tap it down just until it catches. And the same with this piece here. So it catches, there we go, 
and then I'm just going to work my way along doing the same as I did before. You know, a little blob of glue, stick that pleat down, blah, blah. Hold it down with your silicone spatula if you've got one. Just to stop it all sticking to your fingers everywhere. Right, like that. You see, I presume, why I'm saying this is not for basic beginners. It, it just isn't. You've got to have some level of crafting experience. Although I'm a newbie at junk journals, I'm not a newbie at making um, embellishments and things. Because I used to be a card maker. I used to do loads and loads and loads of cards. And um, that's what the majority of my channel is about. But in England, where I live, cards are not the thing anymore. People don't send them. So they don't make them. They might send like a a one-off card or something but they don't make a big deal out of sending cards you know like just seeing how you are card or just for you thinking of you they don't do that anymore so cards are not business in england anymore i don't know what it's like the rest of the world i think america's more um you guys are much more into cards than, than we are so I've watched Jennifer Maguire's channel and she's always talking about how she just gives them gratitude cards when she goes to the hospitals and things like that. If you did that over here, you'd be looked at like you were a nutter. So, yeah, we just, we just don't do cards. In fact, we don't do anything really, to be honest. A lot of the crafts and all of that have well died out in England. Right, so I'm just waiting for this to just catch hold before I cut another piece of the, um, the pleated stuff. And I think that needs to be two inches. I'll just double check it, but I think that needs to be two inches. Right, that's okay. See what I mean about it looking a mess? Just look at my hands, they're filth. But... Right, so the next piece of pleated needs to pretty much sort of cover the lace, come virtually to the top of the of the skirt. And I, like I say, I don't, well, it's not even four inches, about inch and a half maybe. Let's have a look. Yeah, inch and a half at the most. So I'm going to cut that off at inch and a half. No, stop it, boys. Be quiet. That's just somebody walking past. Sorry about that. Right, okay. That's going to go on there. And that will follow its own natural curve. I'm going to put it down a little bit lower so that it covers the majority of the lace. Splay the bottom out a bit. Right, now this is one where it is important to cut um, these, little, um, these little bits at the top because that will help you manipulate it better. So they're about a quarter of an inch deep, spaced about eighth of an inch apart. Gosh, I hope this video tutorial is helpful to you. I mean, please do let me know if it isn't, but maybe try not to be too brutal about it. Cause like I say, I've had a long time out and I'm not good at doing these. Right, so that now needs to cover that entire side. And you can see that there's a, a piece of the um, cone that overlaps the skirt. If you see what I mean at the back? Let's try and keep it as wide as that. So let's shove that bit of lace in there out of the way. Yes, you're being a good boy, aren't you? You've been a very good boy, actually. And I'm going to put down some of this glue. Oh, that's lovely. You're licking my knee, are you? Have I got a dirty knee? That's lovely. Thank you, baby. That's nice kisses you're giving me there. Have you been a good boy? Have you been to sleep? I've actually got three dogs. I've got two 
cockapoos, two black cockapoos that are brothers. And I have got a little miniature teacup chihuahua cross poodle. Um, who is actually five inches high. And his little legs are le uh, just two inches. And he is a little devil. He is the boss of the house. Or he thinks he is anyway. Um, yeah, so the little monkey, his name is TJ. Because ever since we've had him, and he's getting on a bit now, ever since we've had him, so he's about 11 now, he has ruled the house. And he's a right little dude, so that's why he's called TJ. Or Tidger, or any other name we happen to think of at that moment when he's been up to something. And it is so funny watching him lose his rag if he really, really loses his temper. So, watch a little five inch dog lose his temper is the funniest thing, honestly. It re I mean, it's, it's nasty, I shouldn't be saying it really, but he it, it is so funny. When he loses his rag, and he loses his rag with his brothers, always. And the worst thing he can do, the absolute worst thing, if he's really lost it, is to, um, his thing is to uh, go into the bathroom and dig up the bathroom rug. You know, you've got one of those little rugs that go at the side of the bath um, and throw it outside in the hallway. And then you know he's really lost it. Right, so now what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to manipulate all of this lot to fit into a space that's much less than its width, if you know what I mean. Right, I think I've got it. it basically, it's brute strength. There's no um, way of designing it. You just have to shove it there and hope that it goes there and does what it's told. Right, let's move this. So yeah, if we go out somewhere, say I go shopping or whatever, when I come back, the first thing we do is check the bathroom rug. If it's outside in the hallway, we know that his brothers, who are only three years old, but they're like babies, they're like puppies, have been playing up, made him lose his temper, and he got so angry, he dug up the bathroom rug. Funny, absolutely hilarious it is. Right, so that's that layer. Okay, and we are getting to a stage where we need to start trimming. Um, gosh, look at my fingers, they're dreadful. Covered in glue. Awful. We'll have a good time trying to pick that off later. Right, so I'm going to turn it over now. And while it is sort of drying out and without cutting into the cones I'm going to start trimming it a bit getting it a little bit tidier so I'm going to cut this bit of lace I'm definitely going to cut that bit of lace and I'm going to cut that bit of paper there so okay now the other thing is is that if you struggle to make the cones or you don't like them or whatever you can always replace them with another layer of um, uh, frill, you know, pleating. Right, does that look any tidier? Much tidier. Let's get rid of all this took here. Right, let me show you what I'm talking about. One of these dresses, um, is it that one? No, it's not. It is this one here. This little dress here, let's move some of this rubbish. I didn't put cones there. I just did another another layer of the frill, just in a different colour. You see, so these have got two layers of the pleating and one layer of cones, and this has got three layers of the pleating. Still got the same lace, only it hasn't got any at the bottom. So you can make up, I mean, you can do all sorts of different things with this. And that's what I mean about being tatty at the back. If this looks too scruffy and it begins to offend your eyes, 
cut another skirt and cover it so that you, all these pieces are held underneath it. But if you're not bothered about it, like I'm not at the moment, then, you know, don't waste your time. Right, okay, now for the final piece of trim. What have I done with it? Uh, what have I done with it? That's not it, is it? No. Uh, that's all the six inch pieces, the big pieces. Um, I cut it to size. Oh, there it is. Right. For the final piece of trim that goes at the top that helps to flare out the bodice part here, we want another piece, or you can have another piece of lace and just gather it up, whatever you want to do. But this needs to be about half an inch, half to three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to trim this down a bit. So I'm going to fold it all over because this is just too long. And I'm going to cut this down just randomly to about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, maybe a bit longer. Okay. Uh, yeah, even that's too long. So I'm just going to cut it down just a little bit more. So you just want a small piece of lace that you gather. Or, as in my case, buy some you know, have some pre-gathered stuff and you just attach that to the top exactly the same as you attached all the other stuff. Only this time you can do it in one go. So this time you do want it to be straight. So you just add your glue here, 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 here and here. Add a good layer of glue. I'm not going to make the bodice today to go on here. I will do it, but I'll do it as a separate video because it will make this one too long. Because like I say, you can always find how to make the bodice already on YouTube. It's just that I make mine slightly differently. I will do a bodice video, but just not as part of this one. Because you'll all be absolutely hammering me as to why it's so long and boring. But in the meantime, you can be getting on with doing your skirt. See there and there. Even this is probably a bit too long. I've cut it a bit too long. You just bunch it all up. And what you can't bunch up, cut off. Okay. So that's going to go like that. You want it to flare out, stick out the sides a bit prettily like that. Like that. It doesn't matter if it overlaps the sides because we're just going to cut it off. Right, let's just hold this down till it sets. And these are your layers. The only thing that needs to be done now for me on here on the skirt is I've got some of this trim. Um, and you need four pieces of this, this trim or buttons or rosebuds or whatever, whatever you want to put on it. You want four pieces of it, three for these ribbons and one for the top here. These beads are attached to the bodice, they're not attached to the dress. Okay, right, now this does need to be close trimmed at the top. So you want to take this, all of it, right up because the widest this needs to be is one inch, no more. Okay, so it needs to be really tightly trimmed. And then the bodice, if I can find one. What did I do with it? My bodice, sorry about all this scrap stuff everywhere. I'll show you how to make this um, in another video because you can do it two ways actually. The bodice just fits on top like that. And you can either add a paper clip or not, however you want to do it. Oops, that's not level, is it? stupid of me that's gone down there it's not the level Let's see if i can alter it yeah just about just be really careful when you get to this stage um bodice because the bodice will open up like that and you just slot it tightly over the top of your skirt and that point there should come 
you remember right at the start we made that little hole we made that little dot that mark that's where this comes just make sure that all of this is in a straight line straight 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 all the way down there and then we're gonna in the when we make the bodice i'll show you how to do the trim that goes around the outside you can put trim around the neck you can put a big bow there you can put a belt around it you can i mean you can do anything you want you can have it with the the bust line piece up here or you can have it like this one with the pieces folded over and actually you can slot lace under it so it looks like a a lacy top there's so many things you can do in fact one of these let's see which one it is is it this one no it is this one i've even put shoulder straps on it and i think that looks really pretty you know so you can do an absolute multitude of things with it whatever you really want to do so let me just put let me just separate these bits carefully so I want four of them one two and like i say you just decorate this however you want to do it two. if you don't want to put the ribbons down it you could actually use another layer of the cones um you know the, like i say you can do anything you want so i'm going to attach these and the way i've done it is and these ones that i'm making at the moment are for swaps and giveaways you know on, which i'm doing on the groups um, I don't sell them. I don't charge anything for them. I just want... So this one here, I'm going to stick right at the bottom of the ribbon. Just lightly so it doesn't stick it to the paper. Just make sure it stays loose. I don't charge anything for the things that I make. I just enjoy making them and I enjoy giving them away. So um, the only thing I have started to ask for now is... Um, pay people pay the postage if it's a rack or giveaway or something like that then pay the postage um and also because i've had disappointing things with swaps where i'll swap out some really nice bits and pieces and they don't send me anything back which they should do um i wait until i've got their swap first right okay so there's this and i'm going to put this halfway down so I've got some ribbon at the bottom of it and that just comes level with those cones and I'm going to do the same thing with this one it's very hard to tell what's the right side and what isn't so yeah sorry guys if it seems a bit harsh but it's just not fair if somebody puts a lot of effort into making something like this and packages it up really nicely and you know you don't get anything back for your efforts it's not fair um, but I do lots of swaps with lots of people and I have to say the majority of people are absolutely wonderful and I've had some beautiful things in swaps mostly sort of papers and things like that that I can't get hold of and a lady sent me a whole lot of music paper which was absolutely wonderful because I can't get it um, and another lady was from another country wanted an Edith Holden book and I came across one so I, I got it and sent it to her so you know it goes both ways really right now these bits at the bottom you can gather that up and stick it to there so it makes it a prettier edge which is what I'm going to do because don't forget that came level with the bottom of the skirt template so I'm going to gather it up and just put it there or you can just leave it, you know, you don't have to. Pretty much you can do anything you want to. Make these your own. But like I say, I've not seen a tutorial anywhere for how to how to do it. Well, I measured it all out. I sat here meticulously doing it one evening. Tried it about 20 times, you know, until I got what I thought looked right. So I know there isn't another tutorial out there for it. There are tutorials for the bodice, variously 
some really difficult, some not so difficult. I have to say that, you know, like I said at the start, I've made mine as easy as I can. Um, come on, you devil, stick down. So, yeah, you just because you start off with the template of the skirt, as I showed you at the start, which is here and finishes here, doesn't mean you end up with just that shape because these bits stick out and they add to the flair of the dress and make it look really pretty. The more flared it is, you know, the better I like it, really. But you don't have to. You can have it quite, you know, quite nice and neat. Right, this one here needs to tuck up here to this bit. And I'm going to use this glue because that one was a nightmare. I'm going to put a blob of glue there. Um, put the lid on, stop it being a volcano. And stick this side piece to that piece. And that gives it a nice little curve. So that, guys minus the bodice is the skirt part of this dress and i will do the bodice as another video maybe tomorrow um but yeah if you're if you can't wait till tomorrow you want to do it tonight then try looking up gi cur that's g i and then another word k e -R, r and she is happiness in crafting and I think it's just basically called origami bodice. Um, but the back bit, like I say, she does she does proper origami where it's these bits are folded inside. But for me, my fingers and I'm getting on a bit and I've got arthritis and that it's just too fiddly. So I've made mine differently. And like bits here where hers are all folded in and it's all locks it all down i just stick mine with a bit of glue so um i don't think it looks any different okay let's have a look there we go so don't forget this isn't stuck down yet or anything but it, this is roughly what it's going to look like put this on the top just to give you an idea that's going to look like that it's going to have all the beads around it like that um like on here with the ribbons, you don't have to use ribbon. Let me show you this one here. I used ribbons on here, but a thicker ribbon and held it down with flowers. But at the top here, I added this trim because I just thought it would go nicely with this and this. So yeah, anything goes. Okay. And on this one here, um, I used bows and flowers. And on this one here, I just used the flower trim in a different colour. Okay. But anyway, guys, basically, that is the little dress. Um, I think it's really pretty. I'm very proud of it. Um, I, you know, my contribution is, is that I altered the bodice so that it fits with the dress better. And I designed the skirt and the layering and everything. So yeah, if you're if you want to give it a go, give it a go. Let me know how you got on. And um, I'll be back probably tomorrow with an instructional about how to do the uh, bodice to go on the top. Okay, take care, guys. Bye.